they go doing me now. I'm still a talk of the town. Running the scissors, I'm hooking them down. We turn the spots in the frowns. We can't hop out, then we clearing the crowd. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Brianna Imani, and you're tuned in to another Talk of the Town interview. And today, we got Detroit in the building. Let them know who's here. I'm Skiller, baby. See, we was talking off camera, and you was doing all of this, and now you giving all of this. What you talking about? I'm Skiller, baby. This how I always be. Okay. I'm going to let you rock with that. But you know what? We're going to loosen you up. I got a little icebreaker. We're going to do a quick round of rapid fire questions. So I'm going to ask you a series of questions. You got to say the first thing that comes to mind, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Zodiac sign. Labor. Favorite thing to do in New York? Eat chopped cheese. <laughs> Yo. One thing you regret spending money on? Strippers. How do you answer the phone? What up, though? What up, though? Mm. Okay. Artists you listen to the most? I don't know. I listen to a lot of artists. I like Anita Baker, Lil Baby, Kodak, Lil Dirk, everything. I just I listened to Halsey yesterday. Oh, I was we to love Halsey. I was listening to Adele, too. So, sure. Okay, so you versatile. Okay, mm -hmm. nice. Well, I saw you bumping the Adele out the window, so I knew you was versatile already. But <laughs> Halsey, we love her. Shout out to you. Um, okay, favorite show to watch? Law and Order. What was your favorite subject in school? Math. Favorite bar? Bar? Bar, like favorite bar of yours. Of mine? Yeah. I'm my bitch 26 and up. I heard you got BBL, can't let me fuck. It's funny because we going to get into that line a little later. Okay, your last Google search. Porn. You just searched porn in Google? No. Um, Latina fat ass. That's what you put in Google? For sure. You don't got a go-to website? Um, three moles, X videos. <laughs> you know what? All right, Skella. Um, what what world record do you think that you could break, or you could beat, even if you want to make up your own? Clap, fastest clap. Fastest clap. Mm -hmm. Clap as in like applause. Yeah. Let me see. I got warm up. All right, I'm gonna let you watch because we just getting started. <laughs> um, favorite clothing brand? Amiri. Nicest thing that somebody did for you? My cousin gave me 10000 for my birthday. Shout out to your cousin. I wish I had a cousin that would give me 10 k for my birthday. Okay. Biggest turn off? Uh, bad attitude. Stank breath. Okay. And my last question. <clears throat> Let me get real close to the mic for this one. How the fuck you going to pull up to the motherfucking party and forget the party? Because <laughs> I don't see none. I don't oh see none. God. Uh huh. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, that's been, listen, I was saying before, like, me and my best friend have been saying that all week. And so then I see you on your story, on everybody, saying it to everybody. I'm like, nah, I have to bring it up because not only is the song a bop, but you in tune, too. You listen to Y&J? That's my homeboy. We just did a song. Yeah, I, I like him, and I, I feel like <clears throat> I haven't heard the song that you did with him, but I could see how y'all would, like, work really well together. So yeah. I'm going to tune in. What's the song called? Yeah, I got with him. Yeah. He ain't name it yet. Oh, that's why I haven't heard it yet, because it's not out. Uh -huh. Got it. Okay, so we're going to move on. How's New York been treating you? Good. I don't, New York don't owe me nothing. New no. York don't owe you nothing. Talk to us a little bit about the stuff that you've been doing since you've been here. Interviews, freestyles, podcasts. I got, I went to some fashion meetings, got free clothes from Nike and Kasubi. Oh, love that for you. Went to the Webster, got some clothes. I did a lot of stuff. Went to Starlers and Vanity. You see, so you named all of this stuff <clears throat> that you just did in New York. That seems very exciting. But when I asked you your favorite thing to do in New York, you said eat a chopped cheese. For real. That's my favorite Where you part. get it from? But you was like... I can't name that because that was like the cliche thing to say. But I definitely went to Harlem and had cheese and got a chopped cheese. It was fire. The first chopped cheese I had was in Harlem, too. It was close to the 125th station on, I think it was on like 133rd on the east side. And it was really good. And I used to go there every Wednesday. But it's not about me. So, sorry. so how you going to tell me it was really good for you? But when I said it was really good for me, you was acting like I, never, I was wrong. I never took you that weird away. weird for that. I never took, first of all, it never gave weirdo. But I didn't take that away from you. I was just saying for that to be like your favorite thing to do, no. I felt like it was a very cliche I like to eat, answer. Though. Okay. That's wild, though. 
Where did you eat your chopped cheese at? You know what? We're not even going into I was at Hodges in the car. We're not going to get I went in the car and I had my, my clear on because it was mad brick outside, B. You see? And that's what I mean. That's Let me let me hear your best New York impression. What you mean? Yeah, best Word New two? York impression. Word two. Word two? Word two, my mom? <laughs> Word I had to two put on my, my mom. clear. It was mad brick outside, B. These niggas wacky. Nah, we definitely do. Mm, I guess we do, but not like that. Swear to God. Niggas wacky, B. And they smoke on that black Yana, though. I don't know what Yo, that mommy, was. come here. All right, enough. <laughs> enough. <laughs> enough, because I don't even know what, what accent you was getting into, but it, you was losing to New York. Um, no, all right. New York for sure. So, are you tapped into any New York artists? Have you been listening to any music? Yeah. K Flock Hart, mm-hmm. um, TJ Hart, but them like, Known people around here. I like um my man's little guy Cash. He hard. Oh, period. Yeah, shout out to him. Got a couple records with him. He hard as fuck. Mm-hmm. My boy hard as hell. You know who I think that you was actually sound really good with on the track? Shawnee Villada. We got to tap in. Yeah, I think that y'all would sound really good together. Let's just dive into the Detroit music scene. You just said that you had a song with Y and J coming out. Mm-hmm. Fix your face. Oh. Thank you. Um, so we had Armand pull up. Um, Baby Tron also from there. You know, it's a lot of artists that's from there. Who was the first artist that, like, you was in tune with from out there in Detroit? We all grew Michigan? up together. Everybody from Detroit grew up together, so we was all in tune for real, for real. Like, I was in tune with everybody. Like, I listened to everybody. Mm. You feel me? My brother Sada, though. Sada Baby. That's my big brother. Uh, of course. Mm. I fuck with Baby Tron. I like, um, I grew up with Baby Money, Tay B, my cousin. Mm-hmm. Me and PZ got music. He put me on the Two Million Up remix. Um, I got music with Ice Wear Vezo. I fuck with Babyface Ray. Everybody cold. Like, everybody sweet. I okay. fuck with all them. Like, we grew up listening. Detroit listening to predominantly Detroit music. Like, that's what we do. So, how would you describe the music scene, though? Like, is there a certain type of vibe, a certain type of feeling that you would say that you get from it? You got. You got like the smooth artists, like you got like the smooth niggas. Then you get like you got like the the niggas that like get money. Like then you got the drill artists. Like we got our own type of drill music. Like mm. our drill music ain't like your drill music. Like our drill music more like witty and like you gotta know what's going on to know what somebody talking about. But they talking about some real shit. Like yeah, cause. Okay, two y'all things. drill music. Y'all gonna say like, yeah, I shot dog. Like y'all, they like. Cause I feel like depending on who you listen to, it could be the same thing for New York drill music. Like if you don't know what's going on, it may just seem like yeah. They just but talking. it's like New York drill music. We already know who they talk about. Like we know what happened. Oh like, really? You do? We when be you knowing listen to what's New York happening. Drill music? Okay, so y'all be tapped in. We tapped in, like oh. all that K Flock shit. We we look at that shit. We like, yeah. Well, we that's fuck like with more dog. like into the mainstream that's space. That's what I'm trying to yeah. tell you. Like we ain't, like you know everybody ain't tapped in the Detroit artists, but everybody ain't tapped into all the underground New York artists. Mm-hmm. But like the main people, like when they talk about people, like we be tuned in. Like we like that shit. Mm-hmm. Like we like money and violence. Where we from? Like that's oh, we respect okay. it. Like for the New York drill artists. Who are drill artists? See, we don't do like drill, drill. Like that's what I'm saying. Like we got our own. Like, let, let me see. <laughs> yeah. But I don't really want to say no names because I don't want to be like, yeah, they talking about this and that. Like, not for real. All right, and that's okay. So you just mentioned a lot of names. Um, how would you say is like? I know you said that you grew Glock up. Glock Boy list- TJ. Glock Y'all got to tap in the Glock Boy TJ. That's my homeboy. I can say his name. He, <laughs> okay. Like, Cock Boy TJ and niggas like Big Money, Big Key. Like, and like, Ben Gang, those niggas be like, you feel me? That's drill music. That's our drill music. Okay, I got to tap in after this and see what your definition of drill music is. No, that's real so drill. We going to circle back on One this. One of them niggas said, um, all my ops in the box, Little Caesars. Like, <laughs> That's the type of you feel me. You know what? All right, I'm a okay. 
Um, okay. So do you would you say that it's a collaborative type of like environment? I know you say you grew up listening to these artists, but would you say that they be open and open, excuse me, to working with upcoming artists? Everybody open up work with certain people. Like everybody like some people get along with some people, some people don't get along with other people. That's just like everywhere though. Mm -hmm. But like for the most part, people in Detroit, if they know you, they'll work with you. Okay. Like, they don't know you. Like, I ain't going to fuck with nobody. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But, like, mostly everybody know each other, so mm -hmm. everybody be working. A collab that I saw that you have in the works that I was, like, kind of surprised to see was with Cash Doll. I saw that you're one of the featured, um, the confirmed features, excuse me, on her upcoming project. Mm -hmm. What was it like working with her? She hurt. Was that somebody that you was tapped into also as you was I knew. Out? I knew, like. We weren't super close, but I know Cash though. Mm hmm For sure. Do you watch BMF? Yeah. She doing her thing on BMF. I still have some episodes I need to catch For up sure. on. For sure. I she, seen her she, titties on BMF, too. That was her. Oh, here he Fire. Called. Not fire. I mean, she hey. She got some fire titties. It's cool. Shout out to Cash Doll. <laughs> so, um, are, are there any artists that you would like to work with? Yeah. Yeah? Industry artists, though. Like who? Like G Herbo, Kodak, mm -hmm. Lil Durk, um, No Ladies, LMA, Summer Walker. Oh. Summer Walker, like one of my favorite artists. And I just want to tell Summer Walker, if you're listening, make a second verse to Riot. Ooh. Make a second verse to Riot, girl. Riot okay. was fire, wasn't it? Yeah, you want to know something? Like, I don't like that, like, these days, the songs just be so short. So but short. Summer Walker could be doing that. Because she, even Swear with Session God, 32, too. I felt like Session 32 could have been so much longer. So to God. And then she kind of did like a part two to Session 32, but it didn't give like I just feel like I'm begging you for more. Like at the like, end of right, you got to do that for me. Because I be yeah, singing that shit. She did shit, her big one on and that. And then it just go up. You be singing Riot? What? For your love, I need a riot, riot. You be hitting that? Yeah, <laughs> I know. So, Okay, heard you. All right, so, you know, a lot of things have changed over the years. First of all, the hang time is given. Mm -hmm. um, you had new visuals coming out. A lot of, like, new things we see working. How would you compare, like, where you started to where you are now in your career? I had a little bit of money. Now I got a couple dollars. You got a couple dollars. For sure. All right, what about your sound? How would you say that your sound developed? I figure out what people like. I figure out what I like to mm -hmm. do, like what make me comfortable. Like at first, I was just trying stuff, and then I figure out what was me and what wasn't me. So now I know what I could try, what I could put out, and stuff like that. So it's just like mm -hmm. certain stuff just absolutely not me. Certain stuff I can try, mm -hmm. and then certain stuff just I know if I put this out, it's going to People don't gravitate to it. And so what is it that you use to, like, get to that conclusion? Is it, like, based on the feedback that you get from your audience? Is it based on, like, how you feel when making the songs? What is it? Certain songs I make, I just be like, yeah, just that. But I really like um, my cousin Dollar. He had, Sada had wanted him to get on the beat. And then he's like, no, that ain't me. Mm -hmm. And then I just had, like, a brain blast. Like, I'm jumping on a lot of beats that just not me, though. Mm. Then I just started figuring out what BPMs I like, mm -hmm. what um, sounds I like, and stuff like that, and what, um, like, tempos and stuff I rap best at. Do you and have a certain attention. producer that you like working with? Um, JC, that's, like, my go-to. I grew up with him, but. I've been working with Go Grizz lately. He's so hard. Go and then somebody Grizz. named Thomas Beats, he fired too. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that you said um, that now you're figuring out, like, what works for you and what doesn't. Because in listening to your old music, like, your energy cover, like, seven years ago. Like, oh, damn. Yeah. Uh, listening to that and then listening to, like, the music that you're making now, I feel like the difference is before it sounded like you were trying to, not saying this is what you were doing, but it was kind of like, I'm letting y'all know that this is the type of nigga I am. This is the way I'm moving and this is what I'm doing. But now it's just very matter of fact. It's like, 
there's no points to prove. You either know if you know, if you don't, you're going to find out. So I guess it goes to that, like, comfortability. Damn, you really tapped in, though. Oh, because I brought up energy? I fuck with yeah, you. Yeah, you got, like, mama. Dude. You got, like, a few songs out there. I you was mad nothing. weird. Now nah, you ain't weird no more. I told you it I never gave you. weird. I it never gave you, weird. Because like, people be interviewing people don't even know what they talk about. No, I, 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 no I definitely know. Yeah. You ain't weird no more. If you don't know, now you know. I'm glad. Now God, we good too. now. We good now. All right. So um, do you still listen? listen to your old songs like that i don't really listen to my music like that. at all not even like your new songs i listen to some i like i just recorded and then like i try to i listen to r&b for real like i got this whole r&b playlist on my apple that i just listen to all day oh love that okay so you're not one of those artists that be like all right i'm about to put my yo pass me the aux and then you play all your music no, I already be having an act because people know I'm not gonna play my music like that. Then they ask me to play my music, and I play it. Okay. Like out of New York, how did all the days I've been in New York, I probably played my music like a few times. Like I leave in the studio, I play what because I went to the studio like three days. Mm. I play like that. Well, I just left the studio and did like, but then other than that, on the car rides, we listen to R and B. Oh, see, I'm an R&B girl, so I love that. So, okay, so if somebody were to tell you to play your music while you was in the car, what's your go-to song for, like, of your music? Of my music? Of your music, what's your go-to song? I'm not really going to play that shit, though, because I know if some somebody people gonna, be like, oh, I know I people going to like Tay B style or Icky Vicky, so I'm going to have to play that if they be like, song that's out but i'm gonna play some unreleased music for mm-hmm. real in the car i'm gonna play some unreleased music you know what's funny neither like i know those are like the popular songs on your new project but neither one of those are my favorites which one is it march madness damn um yeah because yeah, if you don't want to see me win then fuck you fuck you too period um but they those are both like great songs yeah. but i'm just saying like that one like it hit a little differently for me um so who would you say is like your inspiration um when you're making music everything everybody like you can ask him like i just be whatever i did today probably about it. is either going in there or to go in there tomorrow or something i try to be inspired like i'm probably you know you i probably put you in there it better not be about me being a weirdo. No. You going to say something nice? I'm going to say something nice. All right, but cool. So when you go to the studio, you write in advance, you make it up while you're there? Like, depends. You, it depends. depends how I'm so feeling. You switch it up. I write sometimes. Sometimes I just go off the top. It just. It depends okay. on what mood I'm in. Like, the other day I made a gospel song, and then I did a song like, like Jeremiah was on a hook or some shit. Hmm. It gives versatile. Love sure. to see it. Okay. So... We're going to get into, like, life in Detroit a little bit because I do want to know how your life was like growing up. So walk me through, like, early stages when, let's see, let's take it back to around the time that you first started getting into music. What was life looking like for you around that time? I was in high school. I was playing basketball, and I had a job, and I was going to school, and I didn't know what I wanted to do. But I tried music because I was just like everybody else. Like, I'd be seeing, like, people older than me doing the music. And mm-hmm. It was working for them. So I tried it, and it kind of worked. So. Okay. Now, so you said that you were playing basketball. You think that if you wasn't making music now, you would have still went that way? Or was there anything else that you were tapped into? I was good at basketball, but I wasn't motivated. Like, my daddy died, and then I was like, I ain't really like that shit just turned into a job instead of like being fun i'm like when you a kid playing like that shit fun when you get to high school and shit that shit turned to a job and i ain't like that mm-hmm. like, i ain't want to feel like people made me feel like like if you don't go to a league like you a fuck up like you feel me so i just chose to do something else like people like act like they life depended on me going to play basketball or something so i'm mm-hmm. like fuck that shit do you think that, like, because you said, like, you grew up listening to people in Detroit and stuff like that, do you think that that's, like, also what led you into just, like, taking the music route? For music? sure. Yeah. Okay. And then you also said that people were, like, kind of banking on you with your basketball career. Do you feel that way now? Because you're still, like, up. you still doing your thing, not in basketball, but in music. Do you feel like there's still people that's, like, banking on you? I take care of a lot of people. Okay. Family, friends. Family, friends. Friends of family, family of friends. Oh, everybody eat. Everybody eat. Love that. 
Okay. Skilla for the people. Skill up for the people. Okay, so we talked about Sada um, a little bit already, but let me know. Like, how did y'all get tapped in? Because, like, y'all bond, it really gives, like, big brother, little brother. Like, I really like what y'all got going on. How did y'all I grew up thing? with his little brother, Quill. Mm -hmm. And then my big brother, Weez, like, that's like my big brother. That's one of Sada friends growing up. So he knew I was doing music, and he just brought me to Sada one day. And it, like, I really didn't want to just be like, I'm around this nigga. I'm going to just do music with this nigga. I had to see what type of person he was. Mm -hmm. So we just started hanging. And then we got closer and grew closer. I started going to shows with him. He was taking me out of town and shit to um, his shows and shit he had to do. And then we just grew close. Like, that's bro for show. Yeah, people call you his protege of sorts. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? I mean, some a part of me be like, yeah, I ain't no nigga protege, but I technically am. Like, shit, he showed me how to do this shit for real. Like, I go around, he took me around the world, like, you feel me? Like, showed me how to really do this shit. I learned how to perform from that nigga, like, all that shit. Like, mm -hmm. a lot of my versatility, like, I get that from that nigga. Like, that nigga, for sure, one, one of the greatest entertainers i ever seen, for real. Like, part of that, I've been around, like, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, are you signed to him? Mm -mm, I'm signed what's, to Geffen. You're signed to Geffen. Okay, we're going to get into that. So, what's the, so there's no type of, like, situation between you and Sada outside of him kind of being, like, a big brother mentor? That's my big brother. Okay, cool. Um, So, you said that you're signed to Geffen. It's Geffen. like Interscope Geffen. Okay. That's T. That's one thing that I actually didn't know. So, how did you get into that, that deal? Um... I just, like, my music just had, a like, a spurt where it just started going crazy, like, around the summer of last year. And then, like, everybody just started tapping in with me. Like, mm -hmm. I just had a crazy-ass, crazy-ass run, like, from, like, July to, like, now, for real, for real. But around my birthday, mm -hmm. I got signed, like, in October. But I had, like... All the labels was calling me and shit. See, that I knew. I knew that you had interest. I didn't know that you had actually landed on one. So what was it about them that made you want to go with them as opposed to the other people that put offers on the table? I knew people around. Like, I knew people in the building, like in the Geffen building. So I just knew, like, I had more push in the building with a label. If I knew somebody in the building was more family-oriented. Mm -hmm. um, and then they just had the best offer. When I was talking to my lawyer, like, they had the best offer, like, Mm -hmm. The deal was the best one. Okay. So now a lot of this is making sense because Icky Vicky was a re-release, mm -hmm. right? Was that because of... Label. Label? Okay. Sure. But on the topic of Icky Vicky, one million, two weeks. Shout out to you for that. That's hard. Visuals is fire. Mm -hmm. How did you come up with those? I really wanted to be Chip Skylark because it was Shiny like Icky Vicky. You feel uh -huh. me? But then they like, you should go, you should be Timmy Turner, so... They came up with the treatment, and then I liked the video, so I'm like, because I really wanted to be chased around by girls, for mm -hmm. real, for real. <laughs> it was yeah. the skill in me, just wanted to be chased around by girls, for real, and be Chip, um, Chip Skylark, but I mean, the there's video, still potential. Yeah. Next song. No. Nah. No? You wouldn't do that in another song? Uh, you wouldn't do, okay. I'm done with Timmy Turner. See, all right, can I just tell you, maybe it's the New York in me, because we got a lot of sample music going around. Like, I was really thinking, like, a, hey, Vicky, you're so, so, like, a, a sample of that would have been fire. So, the fact you said no more it's fairly odd appearance. so hard like, to clear Tim fairly odd appearance sample. Yo, they don't want to clear none of my just, samples. Just in case. They don't want to clear none of my samples. So, how do you feel about, like, music that is, like, released that's not cleared? Because a lot of people are doing that now. Like, they not... Yeah, they not under labels, though. Once that's you true. under label, got to clear everything. That's true. Business side, really, like, the side you really need to pay attention to. The music side be easy. Like, if you're doing music, you got to know the business. Because mm -hmm. uh, that shit will fuck you up. And it costs, like, people ain't clearing shit for free. Right. Like, sometimes, but not and for real. Niggas want their money. Mm -hmm. So are you learning the business as you're going through it? Or is there somebody that's, like, putting you on? I know you got Sada. But are there people that you turn to for, like, business advice for in the sure. industry? Got my cousin, Shoot, my manager, Juan, Pootie, um, 
my lawyer, like I talked to everybody, my label, the president of my label called me every day. Like, mm -hmm. so it just be like my A and R talked to me. So I really got a good supporting cast. I talked to other people, other artists, learn from them. So mm -hmm. like T Grizzly, I just like started being around him, but he helped me a lot. He showed me the business. So I just try to take I try to have my ears open at learning. Mm -hmm through everybody for real and i'm glad you brought up t because i was wondering also how y'all became connected um he just tapped in one day like mm -hmm. i know like we are from detroit so of course i know somebody he knows so mm -hmm. we just like we just did some music one time when i was i really seen him when i was in london one time and then after that we did some music in la and then we just like i ain't gonna lie t when I work with T, the energy be good. Like, I be going on vibes and energy. Mm -hmm. Like, the energy was there. We made some good music. So, we like, we going to come out with a little tape or something. Okay, yeah. I saw the tent in the bio. And then he um did, like, the car freestyle. And then he nominated you to do yours. And then you did yours. You said that back real fast, too. It mm -hmm. was, like, under an hour. For sure. I think, yeah. You did that. And it was good. So, but even with the good, not saying that this is bad, but, like, you did that very quick. Fire in the booth. You bodied, but you said that you was nervous. I was nervous. Why was you so nervous? Because this is a camera. Like, I seen Drake on that. I seen Drake on fire in the booth. Like, if like that shit different. Like, when you be like, damn, I was just watching this shit a few years back. Drake was on here. Now nah, I'm on here. You be like, damn, all these cameras looking at me. Like, mm -hmm. cameras make me nervous. Oh, See, I ain't looked of... in this camera not one time. That's, you, you we here because I don't really be looking either. <laughs> So you was nervous, but I think that I think that you did well with that. Um, but I thought it was just interesting to see, like, when you were like handling it on your own in front of your own camera, like you sent it back real fast, and then like on that platform, you was like, "Oh, I'm so nervous." So how do you get over like your nerves, and how do you build your confidence in situations like that? Just do it. I, I try not to think about it. Okay. I try to close my eyes, then when I open it, it's like I'm doing it now. So when I open my eyes, I got to keep doing it or mm -hmm. I'm going to be embarrassed. I'd rather be shot and embarrassed, though. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to embarrass myself on camera. So if I'm already on camera doing something, I got to keep doing it. So is that like a one-take situation? It was like, it is what it is? No. Oh, like okay. I, Sometimes I, it be one take, but a lot of times I ain't going to lie. Like, that shit's mm -hmm. not easy. Okay. I so, be nervous. Okay. Well, that's normal. Um, so how do you feel about when people compare you to other artists? Because that's something that's been happening a lot lately, especially on Twitter. And I feel like you handle it very well because you respond with the opposite artist answer. I mean the opposite artist name. Because like You're not trying to I be don't really scene. care. Like opinion opinion don't pay me. So it'd be like if I could big somebody else up, I'd big somebody else up. I don't got to have, like, I ain't got to be walking around like I'm the best. I don't mm -hmm. even care as long as I get paid, for real, for real. You don't care as long as you get paid. All this shit of competition, though. Like, don't get me wrong. Um, Because I feel like that feeds into you saying that you will work with your ops if it made sense. For sure. Um, how would you feel, though, if you were working with somebody who had beef with somebody that you was cool with, and then they went on the song and dissed the person that you was cool with. I'm not doing that How do you song. handle that situation? I'm not going to get on the song. I tell you, don't say that. That's disrespectful. It's disrespect when you disrespect somebody you know I'm cool with. Like, I tell everybody, like, mm -hmm. like some of my homeboys cool, not cool. Like, don't get along with some of the other people that I'm cool with. So it be like, bro, y'all could disrespect each other, but don't do that shit around me, like, Say you and her had a problem. If I'm with her and you see us out, don't do nothing to her. Don't even try that. That's disrespecting me. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I'm glad you kind of cleared that up because that's also that also kind of feeds into the narrative that people have when it comes to you working with Sada and T. Mm -hmm. Um, we don't got to get into the politics of all of that, but I know that some people are like curious as to like what that situation looks like when you are close to two people who aren't really seeing eye to eye in a moment. I mean, Sada and T knew each other before me. That's that's not my business. Mm -hmm. For real, for real. I'm, I'm here for the business. Right. Like, Sada, my real big brother. I love that nigga. Mm -hmm. Me and T getting cool, but, like, it ain't nothing like that, like, to where, like, 
Ain't nobody died. Them niggas ain't fought. None of that shit. So I really like, I'm here for the business. Like, right. I don't be going into business thinking personally. If I could work with my ops, I don't even be caring about nobody. Like, ain't nobody died. I don't give I really don't care for real. But do you even have, like, you seem so unproblematic. Like, I feel like if you have ops, they would be ops by association. They opping. Sure. They opping. <laughs> oh, them boys, them boys opping for sure. But it's like I don't broadcast what I got going. Yeah, down. at like, all. That's why I'm like, you seem very unproblematic. But that's good. I, yeah, I'm unproblematic for sure. Yeah. But like you know, when you unproblematic, sometimes problems come your way because people think like you won't, but you really will. Like, mm-hmm. and I think that that goes back to what I was saying about like in your music, it's like more of like at this point, if you know, you know, not you gotta like. You don't got a point to prove. All right, so something else that I wanted to talk to you about was um, last year you said that, like, without weed, you felt like your mind was a lot clearer, and you spoke a lot about being sober. Mm -hmm. Um, Are you still sober? Yeah. Okay. Um, And what made you make that decision to be sober? It just, I I really had uh, got locked up. But then, like, when I got, when I stopped, Smoking, it was just like, I ain't need it no more. Like, I didn't need it. And I just, everything I was getting done without getting high just made me feel like I'm thinking clearer. I'm getting shit done. Like, I know when I get high, like, I fuck around, go to sleep, have something to do. And I'm knocked out. Like, and then when I start, I tried to get high one once last time and shit made me so paranoid. I'm like, this shit is just not, not for me. you no more. And I know Sada Baby actually spoke about his sobriety a few days ago. Um, so shout out to him for that. Very proud of that. Um, do you think that it's difficult in this industry to stay sober when it's like so drugs and liquor and everything is they're just so accessible? Or do you feel like depends on how strong your mind is. Mm. Like, like some people fall to peer pressure. Some people have like addictive personalities. Mm-hmm. I I just happen to be don't. I'm blessed. Like mm-hmm. I um I sit in the car. They smoke. Do all the type of shit around me. I don't I don't fall to it because like I don't need it. Like I be high off life. I'm genuinely happy with my life for real. For real. Like I'm blessed. Like I came a long way. And you know. Krishan Rock the other day, she was saying that she wasn't drinking before she met Blueface and when she was on his show, like, that's when she really started drinking. And so that's why I was wondering, like, is it a challenge to stay sober in this industry? Because now, like, people associate her so heavily with liquor, but before she got in this industry, she really wasn't drinking or anything like that. So I, I mean, it's interesting it's to like, see how you think about that. You got to think, like, they partying all the time. Like, this industry, like, you got to party all the time. That's part of it. Like, I be bored in a club, like, want to drink, want to smoke, but it's just be like, I'm here for a reason. I'm more so here to get paid, to have fun. Mm-hmm. I ain't going to lie. Like, sometimes I drink, like, occasionally. Like, last night I went to Starless. So I had a drink. But, mm-hmm. like, I really a hold the same clip for three hours, for real, for real. I ain't really drinking. Not you babysitting, but sure. but I understand I understand why. So, okay. Um, so I know we only got a little bit of time, but I know your fans definitely want to know this. You got a lot of ladies mm-hmm. in your fan base, mm-hmm. and they the, the ladies love Skilla, okay? So talk to us about your dating life. What is that looking like? You single? You I'm working. You working. For sure. Hard. Okay. Hard as hell. Okay. So, when you not working, we know that you like your ladies 21 and up. 26. 26 and up. I, yeah. I don't know why I said 21. 26 and up. But is there anything else that you look for in a lady, um, like, when you're dating? If you know, you know. See, you was calling me weird. Don't be weird. That ain't weird. If you know, you know what? If you know, you know, you either got it or you don't. Damn. Sorry, y'all. I tried to pull it out of him. He, all right. Well, you somebody. weird. That was messy. How was that messy? Because like they want to know. Because you tried to make it easy for him. Yeah, because they want to know. They all down your timeline. They, they be tagging you. You got the ladies like, all I want for my birthday is a happy birthday from Skilla. Like, they happy birthday really... from Skilla. Well, there you go, baby girl. <laughs> um, but then also, if you want to talk messy, there was a girl who posted a screenshot of you, like, trying to shoot your shot or something like that. She was trying to say that you was trying to shoot your now shot. Now that was Kat. I got the screenshot right here of our messages. 
I just because yeah, it was it was floating around the socials. Somebody just sent that to me and tried to cuss me out for real, for real. And it's really if you getting cursed out over screenshots, that means you doing more than working. So I, mean, I caught you. What you mean? I ain't gay. Like <laughs> I ain't gay. Like I talk to females. Like like you no. think I? What did you think I'm supposed to like? Not talk to people like so that's why you wasn't saying what you was interested in because you got somebody that would be upset if they heard you of course oh, everybody okay. got somebody see that's all you had to say i don't you get what you're saying difficult. though i don't get what you're saying look at the screenshot all right i save it that oh. girl <laughs> that girl did a fake screenshot okay so how do you feel about that though like is there a certain way and that artists trouble. huh i got in trouble damn my mama called me Wow. Do you feel like there's a certain way that artists should, like, go about, like, handling situations like that? Because that's happening a lot now, like, no. where the screenshots get to fly in on the social media. I troll like, their ass on Twitter. I tell their ass, put a big-ass blue cap right there. I saw. But, I mean, like, moving forward, like, does that keep you from, like, shooting a shot in DMs? Do you no. save it for okay. If I want to do it, I'm going to do it. If I did it, I would have said I did it. Like, I, I feel okay. so. I look like a little-ass girl, man. Yeah. I don't do mess with little girls. 26 man. and up, y'all. I don't mess with little girls. I don't do that. Like Okay. Okay. I don't care how pretty you is, none of that. I'm, like, grown-ass women. I ain't. Okay. Well, there y'all go. So, um, what can we expect next? Like I said, it's only the beginning of the year, but we still have 11 more months to go. So, what can we expect from Skilla for the rest of the year? You can expect Skilla to be on Talk of the Town. Again? It's given part two? Fashion week. Okay. Well, okay. So, then I feel okay because I felt like there was so much more that we could jump into. So, we're going to save it for the next I part. I fuck with you. You weren't weird as I thought you were. I really don't even understand why you would think that in the first place. You came weird at first. Like, I'm, Brianna Ivani is for the people. It never gave weird all. I keep trying to tell you that. I fuck with you, too. Okay, and I fuck with you, too, Skiller. Skiller, the people want to know two things. So, first, we're going to do a drip check. What you got on? Freak on. Mm-hmm. My Camaries. I had on the Louis shirt, but then yeah, I took it off. I got on the black T-shirt because this was just so Detroit of me. The black, black tea? The clean black tea. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, I'm in New York. I'm going to throw the mind clear. I was the big black the, puffer. The uh-huh. I was going to throw on the shiesty. But I just like, it's a, it's a girl talk show, so I don't even want to be like <laughs> too thugged out. You feel me? Well, I appreciate that because the ski mask and the glasses, I'm glad. I was wondering if you was going to pull out the shades. I'm glad you didn't. No, I'm glad I didn't either because if we was both being shady, I see what you did there. That that was a good one. I see if you feel like I'm shady, just wait to part two because we didn't even really get into it. But all right, so that's the drip. So what about the ice? Let's see the ice because the the coat is kind of like covering it. Let's see, let's see. Uh huh. I'm missing a couple, but this is the tent. This is the tent. This is the tent. That's so that's Cuba. giving band camp. Band camp. You tapped in. That's why I know you ain't weird. At first, I thought you was weird. If you say that but one more really time. you really tapped in. I thought you was I mad mean, weird like, out here. It was yo, feeling mad weird inside. Yeah, y'all want to know what's crazy? Like, when he walked in here, like, it was good vibe. I thought it was good vibe. We was having no, a conversation you about New hating York. On my chopped cheese. When you start hating on my chopped cheese, I'm like, she weird. Now I can't talk about chopped cheese because I ain't from New York. See, I never said that. Now you're putting words in my mouth. So what did so, you say? I said that it was a very cliche answer of you to say your favorite thing to do in New York was eat chopped cheese. So chopped cheese ain't part of your top three. Foods? Yeah. Not really. See? You That's ain't really, like chopped cheese you ain't for really us. Tapped in. Chopped cheese for us is like it's nothing. Like we yeah, we go to the store, get a chopped cheese. Like that's not no, for me though. I was eating chopped cheese in middle me, school. But I wasn't though. This and that's why it's like York, that to you, but not and to I me. And I liked it. You feel okay, me? Okay, well, it I'm glad that you had that experience. And chopped cheese. It ain't got old yet. See, I never said it got old. I just said it's not in my top three. Like, it's like a everyday so what's your type top thing. three? Matter of fact, before you answer that, <laughs> hold on. Wait. What's your type? Since you asked me Ooh. what's my type, Whoa. tell the men. They want to know. The men don't care about they what my know. type is. What's your type? If you want to know what my type is, 
Holla at me on the gram underscore Brianna Imani. We could talk about it there because this is not about me. It's about Skilla Baby. So, back to what I was saying. We did the ice. I mean, yeah, we did the drip. We did the ice. The people want to, don't look at me like that because I see the eye twitching. I see the eye twitching. Anyway, we did the ice. The people want to know how much you dropped on the ice. How much? That's what they want to know. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> This one right here is like a hundred and thirty thousand. I spent like these like these diamond links was like fifteen thousand a piece and these was fifteen thousand a piece. Okay, so um I wasn't initially gonna ask that, but since we're talking about it, we know the situation that happened previously with your chains and mm -hmm. all of that. Is there a certain way that you move following that situation? Like do you move differently Hell after yeah? yeah? Like, is it watching who you around, watching where you Not go? Not for real. I really move the same. I just move more dangerous. Like, I was like, in my city, like, I'm really like the cool nigga. I'm part of the cool niggas. Like, mm -hmm. like I'm cool, but like, okay, you feel me? You know, cool shit kid. happens. Like, but you know, like, shit happens, you know? So, okay. shit, I'm just more dangerous for real, for real. I was on probation. I couldn't, like, Move how I want to move, but now I'm off probation, so really I move how I want to move. All right, move. allegedly, allegedly. All right. Allegedly what? Allegedly. You moving how you move. You just, you staying safe. Yeah, like. You staying safe. I just don't want you saying too much. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm the good guy. Okay. All right. But I know I keep saying this. I know y'all got to go. So is there any last words that you want to leave us with until we can circle back to part two? She messy. <laughs> Oh, how you am ain't I weird, messy? But you shady and messy. First of all, how am I messy when I'm interviewing you and you over here asking about my type? You're messy. No, you like me. No, I don't. I can tell. Yo, you see, it never gave that, and this is not it's giving that because you see, asking too much personal shit. It's an interview. What am I supposed to ask you about? You keep like you asking me like you questions. And no, then you I'm winked not. at me under your head. No, I didn't see y'all. I'm telling the people. Y'all probably can't even see I'm, what's I'm going on the under people. the head, but I promise you I'm it never gave that. Area. I'm very she professional, y'all. She was trying to ask me if I had a girlfriend. And because I you got mad girls that be on you on the socials. No, That's they like, don't. See, now you lying. Allegedly. No, don't try to take for my sure, though. All right, all right, yeah, Allegedly. all right. We wrapping this up. What about how you went under, the under that hat, Because I though. never did that. See, now you lying. All right, let the people know where to find you. Find me in New York right now.